Good afternoon and welcome to Modern Images. I'm your host, Travis Flora, and welcome back from spring break. Of course, now the spring break is over for a lot of us, the, uh, the stress time sets in. We have finals coming up and um, semester-long projects becoming due, and for some of us, the job search is beginning now for, uh, for summer, whether it be a summer job or for uh, our life in the real world. Hopefully, we'll have some money coming in soon to pay back all the loans we owe the government for the next 30 years. Uh, with me today is Mike Hopper, Director of Career Planning and Placement, and uh, to talk about some things that might be of uh, be of interest to some of our students to be graduating this this semester. Uh, Mike, welcome to the show. Glad to be here, Travis. Uh, so tell me, Mike, uh, what's what's the job market like out there now for uh, students who are going to be finishing their their degrees? Well, you know, it's rather interesting. You hear in the newspaper that the job market is tight, and that's that's sort of a half truth. It's estimated that at any point in time there are over a million jobs open in America. The job market is tight but for certain majors and certain types of positions in certain locations. Uh, it's a mistake to think of uh, the United States as one job market. Actually, it's thousands of job markets. Every city, every town, every location is a different job market. Okay, so uh, are there any particular areas that uh, are going to be hiring more than other areas, uh, whether that be by major or geographic location? Well, if you believe what the government is saying, uh, in the next 10 years, of the top 10 careers in America, three of them are in the health fields and three of them are computer related. Uh, things like home health aides, registered nurses, people who are going to be working with an older population. The population of America is growing older and we need health people. And then also computer science is taking over. There is a 75 percent increase right now in the demand for computer scientists and people who can repair computers, people who can program them, and uh, so that's a hot field right now. Okay, so uh, computers and, and healthcare, is there any, what, what about the geographic area? Though? I know a lot of people, uh, Moorhead serves the eastern Kentucky uh, region. Uh, is there a, uh, a particular job market in this geographic area, or uh, are students going to have to go outside of this area to look for jobs? Well, unfortunately, <laughs> eastern Kentucky does have some problems with the number of employers that are available. There are some majors in Eastern Kentucky that are doing quite well, and there are other majors where you're going to have to leave the region. For example, if you went out 50 miles from Moorhead and asked the question, how many accountants will there be hired in that 50 mile radius? There would be some, but there wouldn't be nearly as many accountants as there would be in Cincinnati or in an area like that. So it is, it is a spot market. Mm -hmm. So uh, how do, uh, how would new college graduates go about trying to find those spots that you were talking about? Where, where the jobs are? How do they find the jobs? Okay. Well, the first question I would ask is what's happening in a market? Let's take the uh, city of Charlotte, North Carolina, for example. All right, what is happening in Charlotte? Well, for one thing, the population is growing very rapidly. And when the population is growing, that means jobs. Also, new industries are moving in there. Uh, let me give you another example, I-95 in South Carolina. They're now calling it the Autobahn because so many German companies are building plants there. Mercedes-Benz, uh, BMW, and some other major companies are building new plants right along I-95 in South Carolina. There are going to be thousands of jobs there in the automotive industry. Okay, but uh, how do they, you, you've mentioned some, some different industries and some different areas. How do uh, students at Moorhead find those, find the uh, the path to the glory land that is employment. <laughs> well, you really, in any job search, you only have two basic resources, people and paper. You have people who will speak for you, uh, who will tell others about you, who will become your references, who will help you, and you have paper resources. Let me give you an example. I brought some books from our career planning library here, and here's a neat little book called Job Hotlines USA. I don't know if the camera can pick that up, but it has over a thousand phone numbers that you can call. Some of them are toll free, some of them not. And you can get job listings all over the country. Uh, wouldn't happen to be a toll free number, would it? Yeah, some of them are toll free and some of them are not. But for instance, major companies will, uh, GTE South has a toll free number, has a number here that you can call and it will give you job vacancies with GTE. And that's just one kind of resource 
that can help you find out what's happening in a local market. Uh, and there are many others. Uh, I know before the show we talked about the internet has a new, a new service uh, for like jobs online. Is that what it's mm -hmm. called? Uh, could you tell us a little bit about that? All right, the internet I think is one of the most exciting things that's happening in uh, career planning and placement today. Uh, I, right now, the Moorhead State University Gopher server has job vacancy bulletins from literally dozens of universities, hospitals, companies, thousands of jobs are on the internet uh, on the Moorhead University Gopher server every week. So, uh, so anyone that has an internet account here at Moorhead can, can tap into that? or All you have to do is have an academic account. You go over to Combs Hall, if you're a student, ask for an account number. Then you can log on to the Gopher server and uh, follow the menu system and lead you right to several thousand jobs. Okay. Uh, I know I'm just somewhat familiar with the internet. Do you know exactly uh, how many menus in and what do you have to look under to find that? Well, it's really quite simple. Uh, someone can come to my office and I'll give them exact de uh, instructions, but generally speaking, when you log on to the internet, you'll, you'll get a menu. Your first menu will say Moorhead State University Gopher Server, or it'll say Internet Resources. Tap that, and it'll say Moorhead State University Gopher Server, and you tap that, and then it'll give you a list, and one of those uh, items on that list is career opportunities. Is this something uh, new to the internet? I know they've, they've uh, redesigned the, the format that the, the computer system is on. Well, the, the process is not particularly new. It's been there at least a year, but the actual menu system might have changed. Mm -hmm. I know that we are now putting our office, uh, we have a, a weekly job bulletin that I produce in my office, and it's on our internet. You, from your room, if you have an account, you can log on and read all of the vacancies. Okay, and I know that uh, through uh, career planning, you also have uh, job listings that you keep in your office. Uh, now, how do you all find out about those new jobs? Uh, well, again, we have employers who really want qualified people. In fact, employers tell us that one of their biggest needs today is good people. I'll never forget a president of a company, a $20 million company, told me one day his biggest problem was finding good people. He could find all the people he wanted to work, but good people he couldn't find. And so uh, they call us, they send us letters in the mail, they come to campus and recruit, uh, we call companies, Lots of different ways in, that we find out about vacancies. Okay. Well, it's interesting what you were talking about, uh, what, what the employers are looking for now and, and the problems they're having. And uh, when we come back after these messages, we'll talk a little bit more about that. This is Modern Images. I'd love to be big and strong like you. I sure hope so, son. Why wouldn't I, Grandpa? Well, unless something is done soon, big old trees like me will be nothing but a memory like the giants in the old fairy tales. But, Grandpa, what would the forest be without old ones like you? I think they call it a tree farm, son. My hero? Isaiah Thomas. Kevin Costner. Mr. Wong. These are teachers, but to the kids they've reached, they're heroes. My hero? Mrs. Wooten. If I don't get through to that child, who knows, maybe no one else will. Teachers have the power to wake up young minds, to be heroes, to make a difference. Reach for that power. Teach. Find out how by calling 1-800-45-TEACH. Be a teacher. Be a hero. Mrs. Washburn, I'm uh, Gerald Fry's mother. Oh, don't you work nights? I treated shifts. Mrs. Washburn, about Gerald, I wish I could help him learn better, but I'm no genius. Well, you don't have to do the homework, but ask to see it. Let him show off what he learned. Praise him more. Show you care. You think we've got a chance here? A good chance. Show me a parent who really cares, and I'll show you a kid who can learn. If you're worried about the future, plant a tree today. They clean the air we breathe, create beauty. They cool our cities, shade us in the summer. Conserve energy. Help fight pollution and protect us from the cold winter winds. Birds will come here when it gets bigger. Children will play under its branches. That's the miracle of trees. Hey, why don't you plant a tree too? Please, trees for America.
And welcome back to Modern Images. I am, as always, Travis Floor, and with me again is Mike Hopper, Director of Career Planning and Placement here at MSU. And uh, before we, uh, we, we left for the break, uh, we were talking a little bit about what employers are looking for in new college graduates. Uh, I know you have to get uh, new books and brochures all the time outlining what the latest trends are. Uh, so what, what are employers looking for out of new graduates today? You know, it's surprising, Travis. Uh, I have a survey in my office that was done among the Fortune 500, and it asked that very question, what do you want in new graduates? One of the first things and most important things they said was the ability to communicate effectively. Now, you know, Moorhead State University has some required courses for students, uh, speech 110 in the business department and you know, business and professional speech. Um, and the reason we require those courses is because that's the things that people are looking for. The ability to write clearly, extremely important. Employers tell me frequently that uh, many new uh, employees cannot write well, cannot write a report, for example, that's readable, concise, and clear. Flexibility. One of the things that employers tell me they are most uh, in need of is people who can learn fast, learn rapidly, and be flexible. Let's say this week you are a salesperson, you're a marketing person, and suddenly the, univer the uh, company goes through a consolidation of its business and they want you to move into a different area. They want you to move to human resources. You've got to be able to be flexible and in a relatively short time learn new skills, new ways of functioning. I talked with an employer right before this show from Kentucky Utilities. Uh, they've gotten a new vice president for human resources and they're going to be doing some restructuring of their human resources department and it's going to require a lot of flexibility among the people that work there but communication the ability to write and the ability to be flexible in fact in another survey uh, they ask employers why do you fire employees the number one reason was not showing up for work but the number two reason was the inability to get along with other workers and, you know, really, Moorhead State University can't teach you how to get along with other people. Right. That's, that's one of those things that's, like I said, you can't be taught, but it's important to know because uh, once, you, once you get the job, it's very important that you keep the job. Mm -hmm. uh, I know the, uh, the ability to communicate has been the, the focus of a number of shows and articles. We've, we've discussed that in an interv interviewing class I have. Uh, how can students get better at uh, communicating and presenting their ideas? Or perhaps it's an old-fashioned idea, but I, I believe one of the ways you learn to communicate better is by doing it. I deliver probably 40 or 50 presentations a year to workshops, uh, student groups, classes, etc. And I feel like it helps me to do a better job each time. And yet we have students who deliberately avoid their speech classes until their last semester. I've had students tell me that uh, they avoid business and professional speech until they absolutely have to take it because they fear it. And yet that's one of the classes that could help them most to be successful. All right, they, they put that off to them because they have a fear of public speaking. Uh, mm -hmm. My fear of unemployment would uh, far outweigh that. <laughs> well, but, that, but that's one way that you can definitely improve your communication skills instead of taking just the minimum speech class take another class take an advanced oral interpretation class or a class that can really help you to develop oral skills I know some other areas that have traditionally been considered important is a, is a grade point average and uh, student activities and also job experience now are those still uh, as important today as they were maybe in the past and that's also a mixed uh, issue. I have had some employers in some industries, for example in marketing, tell me that grade point average is not an issue with them. Uh, they will take a 2.0 student as well as a 4.0 student if the student can communicate well. And when you think about it, that kind of makes sense. If you're going to be a salesperson, what you need is personality. And if you've got a 4.0 and you can't communicate, then you can't be a good salesperson. On the other hand, there are some industries that will not even talk to our students. For instance, an accounting firm in Ashland will not talk to a student who doesn't have at least a 3.0 in accounting. And that makes sense. Would you want an accountant who made all D's and low grades in their accounting classes? Uh, I personally know. <laughs> <laughs> okay. But uh, what about the areas that, such as uh, internships? I know uh, uh, it's been called apprenticeships or internships. Mm -hmm. uh, is that, how important is that still? 
You know, that's, that's extremely important. In fact, I brought a book here, another resource. Now, this is the 1994 version, but there's a book here. In this one book are 30,000 internships. Now, I think I ought to perhaps tell you the difference between an internship and a co-op. Uh, we have cooperative education here at the university also. Cooperative education, usually a student will work a semester, then go to school for a semester, and then go back and work another semester. And in that case, you're alternating. Uh, you're still staying in school, but you're working full time. And for instance, at uh, Lexmark in Lexington, we have several students doing co-ops right now. And they're paid between 10 and $15 an hour while they're working. They earn credit toward their degree. And then they finish, and when they finish, their resumes have a six months to a year of work experience on them. An internship typically is for one semester and it may or may not be paid. Many of them are paid and some are unpaid, but typically it's for one semester. But like uh, students will walk in frequently to my office and say, I'd, I'd like to do an internship. Is there any place I can find out about them? Well, there are. This is just one book and there are several like it that list literally thousands of internships. Okay. I know you'd uh, mentioned just now people are coming to your office looking for these uh, for the jobs basically because mm -hmm. uh, being at the career planning and placement office I tend to believe that uh, you'd be the one to help. Uh, have things started picking up for you now that spring break is uh, is past? Are people getting a little bit more serious about it now? That's an interesting question. Some students are serious the whole way. I had a freshman that came in recently and wanted to know about the job market and I said you're a freshman and you're already looking at the job market. Now that's a serious student. Unfortunately, I will also have seniors come in the week before graduation, as I do every year, and will say to me, okay, I'm graduating next week, now what do I do? That's a little bit late. So it's a mixed bag. Right now I have a lot of students coming in to work on their resumes, uh, to work on uh, interviewing skills and other things. So yes, it's picking up. Okay. Well, I'll tell you what, Mike. Uh we're going to take a break now, and when we come back, we'll talk a little bit more about the resume services and, and the other ways that uh, career placement can help students. This is Modern Images. And she was scared to death of going back. I made everything more important than going back to school. It was silly for her to be stuck in the same old job. When I could be doing something more. Oh, I pushed her and I pushed her to get her GED. She pushed me and she pushed me. I told her to do it for herself first. And then to do it for my kids. My kids. If I can do it, anybody can do it. Get your GED. Call today. The call's free and so is the program. Adult education, changing lives. Okay, if you'll fill out this job application. I couldn't read, but I was too embarrassed to do anything about it. He had his first car. Really doing better. Don't waste another minute. Learn to read. Change your life through literacy. The call's free, and so is the program. Adult education, changing lives. really did it last night. Got drunk, acted stupid, went home with... with... Who is that? What am I, stupid? How did I do this? Barry began to worry. Really worry. What about AIDS? Then he remembered, hey, I'm just a cartoon. I don't even have to shower. Get high, get stupid, get AIDS. A tiny 5% of the people in the world consume one-third of its resources and produce almost half the non-organic waste. Those people are us. Nothing is destroying this planet faster than the way we North Americans live. Welcome back to Modern Images. I'm Travis Flora. With me again is Mike Hopper, Director of Career Planning and Placement here at MSU. And uh, before we left, we were talking a little bit about how the students prepare for finding a job. Is, is there any, uh, or what, what is the best way for a student looking for a job to prepare for the job search process? Uh, I know you talked a little bit about a course called MSU 400. Yes, uh, this year 
for the first year, we have a course called MSU 400, The World of Work. The class is designed to teach students how to find a job, basically. And in that class, it's a nine-week class, earns one credit. We meet twice a week for nine weeks, and it's offered every nine weeks. Uh, this uh, last nine weeks, I had 16 students taking the class. And for example, we will deal with things like resume writing. I brought some resources here just to give you an example. Students frequently ask me, how do I write a resume that I can send to potential employers? Well, there are a number of books. This particular book has 200 samples in it. Uh, there's another one here that has 175 samples, I believe, of resumes. And one of the things that we do in this class is we teach resume writing. How do you prepare a paper document which you can send to employers that will grab their attention and uh, generate interest. Then also, students also, uh, frequently ask me about writing letters. How do I write an effective application letter? And another thing we do in MSU 400 is we look at uh, application letters. This book has 175 samples in it. How do I write a letter to an employer expressing my interest and in such a way that it is effective? To give you a, an example of why this is important, we had an employer who sent a letter back to us in our office. One of our students sent a letter to him asking for a job, and the letter was full of misspelled words. Well, it, you know, put yourself in the place of an employer. If you got a letter and it was full of misspelled words, would you be likely to hire that individual? And that's pretty careless work. And so one of the things we do is talk about how to write effective letters. And in most cases, the, the cover, letter, cover letter and the resume is basically your introduction to most people. And, uh, as you say, you never get a second chance to make a first impression. And in most cases, the only chance you get to present yourself to an employer is through people, and uh, through paper and people, those two kinds of resources. Either someone knows the employer and says, hey, here's a person I think you ought to talk to, or says, um, here's a, a letter or a resume, and takes that to them, or you mail it in. And uh, it's amazing to me how many of our graduates cannot write a good letter. And it's unfortunate because it hurts their job search. Okay, so uh, besides the resume and the cover letters, uh, what else is, is taught in the MSU 400 course? One of the things we talk about is how to research employers. Uh, for example, there are directories like this one, Job Opportunities in Business. It lists several hundred employers and tells what kinds of employer, employees they're looking for. And we talk about how do you do research on an employer and find out what they're looking for. There's a company that's uh, probably well known to you. It's called Shell Oil. Here's a description of Shell Oil. They have 29,000 employees and they set their sales last year were $25 billion. And it gives a little bit of a summary of them and it tells what kinds of people they're looking for. And it also gives you a, the name of a person, Mrs. Davis. If you want to send your resume to Shell Oil, you send it to Mrs. Davis. So. Another thing we talk about in, in MSU 400 is how to research employers, how to find out about them. Okay. Uh, now, what about uh, once you find you find the person, you get the cover letter and the resume out, and you're called in for an interview? Uh, are there any tips offered in the course as, as to how to conduct the interview? Uh, Absolutely. One of the things we do in MSU 400 is that we have mock interviews. I have a video camera and VCR. We tape short interviews with students and play them back and critique them. And as we were talking about earlier, a lot of students are very fearful of being in a one-to-one -one interview. And practicing helps. Right, I know uh, if you go through a thing a number of times, just like interviewing stuff like this, you get a little bit more uh, at ease, a little bit mm -hmm. more confident. And I guess it would be better to make the mistakes in the mock, uh, mock run-through than uh, to actually make the mistakes in the, in the job interview mm -hmm. itself. Mm -hmm. Now, uh, what about uh, what's called dressing for success, uh, the clothes to wear to the interview, uh, any, any tips given on that? Right. That's one of the things we deal with also in MSU 400. I have noticed that a number of our students come to interviews in my office dressed inappropriately. I was mentioning to you earlier that uh, we have had students come with, with uh, flannel shirts to interviews, and that's just not appropriate unless you're looking for a job as a lumberjack. <laughs> and what are, uh, what are some of the, uh, the, the clothing tips you could give giving, to go to an interview? The, I guess the main 
tip I would give is to dress as you would work, go to work. If you're going to be working for IBM, you wouldn't go dressed in an open neck shirt, no tie. You would go dressed in a blue suit, white shirt and tie, probably. So come to the interview dressed as you would expect to be dressed if you were working for that company. Okay. Well, Mike, uh, we'll talk a little bit more about this after we come back. Uh, this is Modern Images. When your father and I were married, sex was a very different thing. I can tell by looking at her what she's going to say. We dated for a while before he even had the nerve to kiss me. They went to a sauna fountain and shared a straw. Oh, true love. Well, to my mind, you kids have so much more to deal with than we ever even had to think about. So much for the intro. Here comes the good stuff. Sex is a natural thing between two people who love, love each, each other. other. Fast forward through pregnancy and nice young men. A young men who will respect you and who will... Fast forward through marriage and babies. To become a happy and joyous mother. And now for the closing remarks. AIDS is one of them. Wow. There are risks in becoming sexually active. AIDS is one of them. Teresa, let's start at the beginning. HIV is the name of the virus that causes AIDS. We can help you talk about AIDS. Call for a guide. Check them out. Pick up a book. You got a fantasy? Imagination can take you to where you want to be. Are you curious? How can you find out? Books. Check them out. Books. Check them out. Read about stars and cars, play electric guitars, or cops that work hard, patrolling the boulevard, the heavyweight champ and his craziest bout. Books. Check them out. Books. Check them out. At your library. Join the great American food fight against cancer. Serve your family foods high in vitamin A and C, high in fiber, low in fat. Talk to your American Cancer Society volunteer during the Community Crusade. And welcome back to Modern Images. I'm Travis Floor, and with me for the final segment today is Mike Hopper, Director of the Career Planning and Placement. Uh, before we left for the last break, we were talking a little bit about uh, clothing and how to present yourself in an interview. And uh, question, one of the questions I've got is, what about uh, earrings uh, for male and female okay. job applicants? Let me answer that with a more general response, and that is about nonverbal behavior. In some research that's been done with psychologists, we know that nonverbal behavior is more important than verbal behavior in setting the tone of an interview. That can be anything from perfume to jewelry. Uh, we have young men that come into our uh, interviews with diamond studs in their ears, and that's just not appropriate for an interview. And uh, so it can be a lot of things, but nonverbal behavior is extremely important in interview success. Okay. So, uh I guess a lot of this has to uh, some, do with something we were talking about earlier, a uh, student feeling a, a certain freedom of, to express himself. A lot of times it's not always appreciated by uh, those in the business world. Yeah. The job search is not the place to be an individualist. It really isn't. Okay. Well, uh, if you could just tell us a uh, final question for you, a little bit about uh, the Career Planning and Placement Office, where you're located and, uh, right. and how you operate there. All right. The office is located in 321 Alley Young Hall. That's right next to the library. We're open 8 to 4.30 every day, and I will extend hours if a student can't get there during, during the regular hours, and I work by appointment. All you have to do is call 783-2233, tell the secretary you, you need an appointment for whatever uh, reason, whether it's resume or interviewing or whatever, and then I'll try to, try to help. Okay. Well, I want to thank you for being on the show today Glad and to be here, uh, Travis. and urge everyone to get in touch with, with Mike and the staff at the Career Planning and Placement. There's a lot of things that we didn't get a chance to get into in a 30-minute show, so they can be a lot of help to you and uh, keep you out of the unemployment lines, hopefully. Uh, as for me, that's it for Modern Images this week. Before we leave, happy birthday, Cassie. Daddy will be home in a little while. Have a good week. <laughs>